Smart automation, better business. Learn how to optimize your business with Solved. Hello and welcome back to the Solved YouTube channel, your go-to source for Revenue Cloud and Salesforce knowledge. If you're like me and you're just getting into Revenue Cloud, you're starting up with the advanced configurator, you might have some questions about how to set up constraint models. And you're not alone in that. So in this video, I wanted to walk through how to set up your first constraint model. Do I need to write code? What do I need to do? I'm going to walk through all of that for you today. And so you'll be able to follow along, assuming you've already set up your org to be able to run the advanced configurator. If you haven't, then go check out that video and maybe some of our other videos on the advanced configurator and Raven Cloud. But in this video, we're going to be walking through how to set up your first constraint model. So I'm Jared, I'm a certified sales, a Salesforce consultant, and I specialize in setting up Revenue Cloud for high growth teams. So if this video is helpful, please like and subscribe and leave a comment down below if you have any questions coming out of this. All right, so jumping into Salesforce, this is assuming you've already set up your org and your revenue settings to turn on the advanced configurator. You've given all the correct permissions and everything, and you're able to see this constraint models. Again, if you're if you're coming to the app launcher and you're not able to see constraint models, but you've done everything else, then just make sure you go into your profile settings and make sure that the constraint models tab isn't hidden, because that's something that, that holds a lot of people up. So let's go ahead and come here and click new constraint model. We're going to put in a name and here we're going to make the constraint model for the laptop bundle. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to say laptop pro bundle constraints. One thing to note is that a product can only be associated to one constraint model. And so a constraint model can have multiple products within, but the a product can only have one constraint model. So let's set this up for this bundle. And you're going to select your active sales transaction context definition. And to know that, if you don't know, go to your currently active pricing procedure and see which context definition it's using. So I can save that. So this sets it up. And as you may tell, if you've messed around in Salesforce and Revenue Cloud before, this looks very similar to the screen that you'll see when you're looking at pricing procedures. And it's very similar. If you click in here, you can see your currently active version. And when you start, it's going to look quite empty. And so you'll need to add an item. What's really cool about this is that you don't need to come in here to the CML editor and write out all of the different relationships and constraints here in CML code. While you could, what Salesforce has done is they've made it very easy by allowing you to import your product configuration from the product configuration right into the CML and into this constraint model. So I'm going to come here and add item. Pretty soon we'll be able to add a product class, which is very exciting, but for now we can just add a product. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to do the laptop pro bundle. So I'll select that and automatically it's going to pull in all those products and all their setups. So now if I were to save this and come to the CML editor, you can see all those relationships already set up for me with attributes, with their default values, lots of good stuff. And so make it made it very easy. So I'll switch back to the visual builder where I would prefer to build out my constraints rather than writing them out in CML code. But there are some really good resources out there for CML syntax and Salesforce has said that AI has done pretty good at writing CML, which is very cool. They've also said that pretty soon they plan to add capabilities to convert plain text into constraints. But for now, we still have to build them out by hand. Right, so let's, let's build out a simple constraint here. So let's say that when I'm selling the laptop, the laptop product, let's say that my 27 inch screen 
only comes in 4K. So if they're trying to sell a laptop and they're trying to sell the 27 inch screen size, it has to be 4K and they can't sell it in 2K or 1080p. So let's build that out. We'll come back to the constraint builder and on the laptop product, I'll add a conditional logic constraint, which is different than a basic logic constraint because it will only run when your first expressions are true. So I'll say when the laptop attribute for screen size is 27 inches, then we need the display to be 4K. And right here, I'll go ahead and say that the 27 inch screen only comes in 4K. And then I'll save that. And then what's really cool is you can come in here and see in the CML builder, see that constraint that you just built out. So you could come write this in code inside of the CML builder, but I prefer to, at least for the ones that you can, build out on the visual builder first, and then you can go see what it looks like in the CML code. So let's go ahead and activate this and come back to the quote. Or now, if I come here to configure it, then if I, right now it's already on 27 inches, but if I tried to update it to 2K, then you'll see this error message here. One cool thing that I wanted to show as well, and I'll go ahead and remove this. And I'm going to re-add the prop so that we can see this from scratch. So once this is added, I'll come here to configure it. And you can see that the defaults are a little bit different. Since I haven't at this point set the display manually, if I come here and I try to set the screen size to 27 inches, then it's smart enough to know that it's okay to overwrite that and put it to 4K. But if I were to now manually say, actually I want the 13 inch and I want it in 1080p, since I manually, as a user, set that, if I try now to set it back to 27 inches, it knows not to overwrite that and to instead just show the, just show the error message for me to go in and fix that in order to save and exit. So another very cool feature of the advanced configurator in the constraint engine is its ability to know what was done by the user versus what was done by the system. And that's a quick and easy example of what you can do with the advanced configurator, building out a simple constraint and showing how you can bring products into the constraint builder. Hopefully this was helpful. If so, please leave a comment. If you have any questions, please leave a comment and we'll make sure to respond very quickly to help get those resolved for you. And last but not least, subscribe and check out our other videos on the advanced configurator, revenue cloud, and other Salesforce topics. Thanks. Thank you so much for watching. We can't wait to help you automate your business. Please like, comment, or subscribe for more.